Hi guys, Pam, Pamela Gropi Art, and I have a new painting tutorial for you, and I know you're going to love it. Let's paint some butterflies together. I try to make it easy, um, and I, I fudge my way along, so you're going to see how it's not perfect. You don't have to worry about being perfect. We're just going to have fun painting some monarch butterflies. So join me, and let's get painting. I'm going to show you uh, one of my first tries at this and um, I made a lot of mistakes so I started over that lesson was a flop so now this is the third try, try and I'm hoping it's the charm so let's get started with our supplies I am going to use the deco art premium Americana today but you can use plaid folk art uh, whatever you have in similar colors. There are colors that are so easily to match, um, easily matched in across the board of brands. So today for the background I wanted a pretty blue. This is cerulean blue. I had looked at teal or and cobalt blue but they just didn't have the same, I don't know, appeal with the orange. So I'm going to do the background in cerulean blue with some white. I want the center to be a little bit whiter so it draws the eye in. And then on the butterfly I'm going to use Dalaride yellow and some cad orange hue. And I have the white. This is um, titanium white. And then on the butterfly wings uh, I'll use the black. And if I want to deepen the orange on the butterfly in areas, I'm going to use vermilion hue. Now in plaid folk art, they don't have a vermilion hue that I know of, but I would just add a touch of red, either engine red or um, what's the other one? I can't remember. There's another red that I use a lot. Uh, cardinal. That oh, should be easy for me because I paint cardinals. Uh, cardinal red. Anyways, just a touch to the orange and it'll create this deeper color of orange. So you don't have to have a vermilion. And if you wanted a little bit brighter yellow, Hansa yellow medium would work too. But I was going for more the little bit orangey color. And this color in plaid folk art would be either school bus yellow or daffodil. Daffodil yellow? Anyways, any yellow because the orange is the primary color. The yellow just lightens the orange without turning it creamy. Okay, so the brushes I'm going to use today are some large brushes. This is a three quarter inch plaid folk art, uh, one stroke. And here is a, this one is a Royal Majestic. So just something, a big wide brush because we're just going to be laying in the background. I want to be able to hold a good chisel edge, which these ones do, around where I'm filling in around my butterfly. And if you wanted to use a little bit smaller brush, maybe a 12, you know, cause to get in there, that would work too. So I kind of roughly resketched on. You can see where I had gone over my previous attempt at a lesson with white one more time. And I had to resketch on, or not resketch, but retrace on the pattern of the butterflies. And I wasn't real careful with the details. That doesn't matter. It's all going to come together as we add it. And I don't worry about perfection. Okay, so let's start our background. I'm going to lay out some cerulean blue on my palette. I love these old clipboards with the, this is the gray, Richardson Gray Matters palette. Let me see, palette paper. And I really do like it. So that's what I use a lot of. Probably going to need a lot of this to lay in the background. And I'll use the Royal Majestic brush. Dampened it. I When I clean my brushes, I'll leave the soap in it and form it into a peak. I have a whole post on my blog on how I clean my brushes. Several of these brushes I've had years and years and years. And that's how I keep them going strong. I always dry it off on a towel or a paper towel. So let's get my things out of the way. 
Here's the palette. I want you to be able to see it. And I'm just, I want it darker on the outside edges. So I'm going to lay in some dark blue, go around the butterfly. Doesn't it matter if you go over the butterfly tracing slightly because um, that's going to be black. So you're going to be able to see a little bit over the, under the blue and it's not hard to cover. Black will cover it. If it was something a lighter color, uh, I wouldn't put the blue close to it because I am like orange. The blue would show through orange, orange and yellow and even red. They're not very opaque pigments. So um, you have a hard time covering over a dark area with it. So I'm just getting it in there. I'm trying to do it fast so it stays wetter. And then I'm going to add the white, which I should have had already on my palette, and I don't. Bad me. Now I'm trying to, st I want this to be dark, dark blue on the out outer edge, so I'm not going to come onto the outer edge. I'm going to come to the inner edge. So that part I can do a little bit faster so it stays wet. And there are mediums you can add that keeps it a little wetter like blending mediums, etc. And I don't have any right now, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. Okay, now I'm going to go into a little touch of white and I want to blend that in. Slip slap. And go around this butterfly as best you can. And just get that color laid in there. I don't care that there's streaks. I want the streaks. I want it to be very loose. Very loose and impressionistic for that background and I want it to blend and if you get lighter come down towards the butterfly more a little dark now see I got that too light towards that edge I wanted the edge dark so I'm going to wait and then I'll go back over that with a dark again with only the dark in my brush Just mishmash it in there. And when you want to go around the butterfly, just stroke in around his body and then blend out. And you can get a little fancy with it if you want it to be like really coming out from the body, just radiating. You can make that effect because you see the strokes coming out. That could be kind of fun. Trying to work as fast as I can so I can blend the blue into the blue, the lighter blue into the darker blue, and have graduated color. Now play around with it. It doesn't it could be all light blue. It could all be dark blue. So don't worry. This, there's no rocket science to this. This is fun art. Kids can do this. It's fun to do it with kids because they can be so loose and uninhibited. And just get it all filled in. Fill in, fill in. And you know, you could actually do some of this after. You don't have to do it before. So the options are open. My paint's getting a little sticky in areas, so I need to be conscious of that because that's what will start picking the paint back up and you don't want that. So I need to finish around this butterfly right here. Just take my brush. I'm not worried about covering over lines because it's very easy to find them again. Just relax while you paint and have fun. Just make it fun. Oh, see? Total area right here. I missed by this butterfly.
and it's totally, you can come back later and touch up. I probably said that already. And step back from time to time. I'm leaning over around the camera, so I'm not getting a good visual. This is where I like to be up on an easel, because you can step back easily and um, see what you can fix or need to fix. But I'm going to leave it for now, because the paint's sticky, and I'm going to start picking it up. And um, we will come back later and do more. So let's move on to our butterflies. So now let's start on our butterflies. Now I want here to be a little bit lighter than out towards the edges. The edges I wanted a little bit darker. So I'm double loading the brush with the yellow and the orange. And I'm just filling in the spaces. I'm not being perfect. And if you wanted to, you can just brush out totally from the center rather than following the design because the black will cover and you see how the yellow is streaking into that orange? And that's what I want. I want some variation in the color. And the same down here. Now you can do the lower petals. Lower petals. See, I'm already flower painting here. Lower wings. Even lighter. And then as you go out further, and I'm just going to brush, I'm going to wipe out. The orange, yellow, I'm not going to, um, sorry, I've reached over here for a paper towel. I'm not going to rinse my brush. And instead of doing that, what I should do is do the bottom butterfly. And I'm doing his bottom portion of his wings with the lighter. And then I'm going to go with the orange in the top wing. Because that's the picture I'm looking at. The bottom wings were lighter. So I'm just going to change it up because I can. And that way they're not both exactly the same. Always try to change it up. So there, and the lower portion, I'm going to bring in the orange and bring it from the bottom to the, to the yellow and kind of streak it in. It kind of blends in. Now down here is the black, so I don't have to worry about painting that. And I want to get that opaque, not opaque, but it's not having the um, canvas showing through, which I do. A lot of times that's why I enjoy painting on wood. Put a little yellow in there. Um, it just, I find the paint goes on so much easier. Okay, now a little darker on these up here. You'd be surprised at how far out the black are in, how big the black is on the wings. I didn't realize it until I started painting them, really how much black. Now I do want to strengthen the yellow, the orange a little bit. So I'm going to go with some vermilion, just a touch. I mean, teeny tiny touch. After I have pulled in the orange, I'll come back with the vermilion and just put a hint of that in there. Now my lines are still clearly visible for the black. And here's where I'm just going to touch into the vermilion and give it a little. And it may not look like it to you, but it's there. As it dries, it will show up. Just a hint to give some depth of color to those ends. And you can put some down here if you wish. It doesn't have to go all the way across. It would just be some to give it some depth. So walk away before you overdo. Make sure you got the coverage you want. And I'm rinsing out my brush because I do believe I have all the coverage I want. Well, see, I see a spot. 
See right there? I'm just going to come in with a touch of yellow, go over that. And there we have it. I might put some yellow dots here because on their wings I see yellow dots too. And I didn't put marks on my pattern just because it gets too busy. And um, you don't have to add every one, single one of those details. And you see right there, I didn't get close to this body or close enough. So I need to come over and get that painted on. Okay, I think I've touched up enough. So there we have the orange on our butterflies. You can let that dry because you don't want the black to start pulling it up or to blend in with it to dilute the black. But um, we'll come back and we'll put in the outer area and I'm going to use a special tool for the finer lines. You can use a liner brush, that will work just fine, and I did it on this one. But I wanted to do something that I can keep a little more control of, and they're really fun for details like this. It just makes it easier, and especially for beginners. And well, you know, it's easier for me, and I've been painting for 15 years, so I will let this dry and we will come back and use our fun little tool for the black. So now we're ready to do some of the black. I have my demo piece that I did before to help me to look at. So I'll put that up here. Now this is the original demo piece I did and that butterfly, this was on my pad of paper. I'm trying to figure out where to lay it. Just view it. Okay. Now, let's start up here. I'm using, this is a 6 Royal Majestic 4150 series. You can use the size flat or if you prefer a filbert or a round, any of those brushes will work. Um, this is just, I learned with flats. I am the most comfortable with flats. So that's what my go-to brushes are. So I have carbon black on my palette. If I was using Plaid Folk Art, I would use licorice black. And I'm just going to put in, that's a little thick. One of my favorite blacks that's very, uh, especially for lettering, it's much runnier, I would say. But for things where you want the paint to really flow, I love Delta Ceram Coat Black. And let me show you the difference. When I go in to do lines um, with a liner brush, I would use it. You see how much more liquid it is, but very, very opaque. So I just love that black. You can use the carbon black or you can go into this. Don't um, worry about using different brands of paint. Go with what you really find easy to work with. So I want to be able to have this paint flow and yet be opaque. So I'm going to pull it down closer to me. Now I'm working around the camera, which is a little more awkward than if I was directly over or in front of this. So give me some grace for that. And let's see. Let's just paint his little head. Don't have to be perfectly round coming in to do his body. And just fill in. And on the one, it has a tiny little point on the end. You see, I just barely brought the brush down to that. It's a little humid today, so my paint's a little tacky, even though it's been sitting here a couple hours. I went and made lunch, and then I had to go to the post office to get my paint pens. So I'm pulling it out, making sure I have a pretty good chisel edge on this because this line right here is pretty thin. Barely any pressure, and then it's widening out 
as we come to the end of the wing. And I'm just going to pull it around, getting good coverage. And I can go into the carbon black as I get back here because I'm not so intent on keeping a chisel edge. Now those two points, I could go over that with black and then come back in with orange um, over top for those little markings. They just would not be as bright. So I'm going to go around them. Just, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just go around those two points so it leaves the orange showing and it's all good. Now this is all black around here. So then I'm going to fill in, being careful. I can still see my lines because orange is not opaque. And that's good there. I'm going to uh, go back over that to make that black more opaque in time. I just don't want to overwork it here and maybe, you know, get going too fast. Take your time. Just go around. And this can be a little bumpy. They're not perfectly smooth. And I want to go around these markings. So how I do that, while that dries, I could go do that and then come back. But I'm going to show you. And hopefully I can do this right now. This is a Posca, Uni Posca. This is a paint pen. A lot of people use these for painting on rocks, etc. So be careful not to press it down. A bunch will come out if you press this little tip down. So very lightly come along and draw your lines. Now I would turn this normally to um, face me or be um, more accessible. I'm just trying to keep it in the camera. I could turn it right here and keep it in the camera. I have a board underneath here. It keeps this from pressing. It fits in there so it gives it a little more um, where I could push pressure on it without having it cave in. So that's just a trick to cut to size. This is 11 by 14 canvas like I said before so you would find a board or cut a board to fit within this space. Mine doesn't fit perfectly, but it does the job for here. So now I'm going to be very, very careful not to get into this where I have already um, painted because it's wet. And these don't have to be perfectly round. They can be kind of um, squared off. So just go over those lines that you brought in. Now this can be a little bit thicker, so you just give it a little more pressure or you go over it a couple times, or you come back with your brush where you can make that thicker. And that basically is it for this trick. This is going to be black. I prefer to do that with my brush. And I see a line there I kind of didn't get. But that is how you do those pretty hairy lines. I shouldn't say hairy. Those lines that are... Um, thin, long and thin. It's just so much easier than a brush. Or at least for me it is. And now I'll go back with my brush. Let me get this line back up. And I will continue on with the larger areas. Again, oops, my brush had too much water in it. Loading with the carbon, a little bit of the other black, the black by Ceram Coat. And I'm just going to go in now and do, I better be careful, I've got my palette here and I put my arm in it. And I'm just going to do these larger lines, keeping my hand out of the wet paint. I'm at an odd angle, 
Normally I'd be directly in front of my canvas. I'm not a real big fan of the overhead because I get my hand in it, but when I'm working to the side like this, see I'm going into those divots with the corner of my brush between those little orange splotches. Anyways, as I was saying, I'm not a big fan of overhead. I too often get my hands too far in there. And I'm looking at my butterfly, and I seem to have gotten this bottom part too black. Too much black, but that's okay. You know what? This is a stylized butterfly, and the next one I could be more perfect. I have been more concerned with talking you through it than I am watching what I'm doing. So, there's a lot of black on this top one. It comes in very far. That's why I could be very comfortable with what I'm doing here. And all is good. So this is good. Could have been I got so far down with the white, trying to make up for the um, being the mistake, but that's okay. In fact, I can bring it in, the butterfly, in with the blue. Well, like I said, look at pictures of butterflies. They are not the same even on each side. The markings can be so different.
so very different. I'm liking the way that's looking. So there is that detail. The lines are in. Don't overthink it. Don't overlook it. You'll go, oh, I gotta fix these lines are crooked or these lines are crooked. Don't worry about it. Some of them may need to be thickened. I can see some here that need to be thickened. It's easy to make lines thicker. It's not easy to make them thinner because the orange will never cover black. So if you wanted to come in and add more orange, you could try it. In fact, I'll show you um, in a little bit. Now, see how I got that overlined there? I brought them in too far, but just correct it a little bit. Make these lines a little bit thicker because they are on the butterfly there, thicker. So don't be afraid to go over them a couple times and give them some oomph. Same down here, just going over those lines. Try to be as neat as possible. See, there's a line in there that I didn't cover, and that's where I'm going to show you how I'm going to try to show you how orange will not go over black very well. You can do it a few times, and maybe it will cover it and maybe it won't so just accept it maybe it's an extra veining or a dark spot in your butterfly or something like that just don't over worry about it Turn if you need. Turn, turn, turn. Light pressure. If you give too much pressure, it'll pump out way too much paint. and you'll have a big black blob. Okay, I think I've thickened most of my lines enough. And we will let that dry. And after it's dried, we will come back and we will add some more details and we will clean up the background. So I hope you've enjoyed it so far. This is, it's getting there. It really is. So get yourself an iced tea, ice water, what have you. Come back when it's dry. So let's come in and let's work on that background some. I am going to first start with, I'm going to use a 12 brush, and I'm mixing in some cerulean. Cerulean with the white, because I'm going to go in around the butterflies. Hopefully this guy's head is dry, because I'm going to come in. Now if you want to use a smaller brush to do this, go right ahead. And just paint around your butterfly. A little cerulean, a little cerulean, a little white, and blend. If you need more white, more white. 
etc. So I'm going to come in around this butterfly wing. And always know that black will cover white. If you accidentally get over your butterfly, you can bring the black back in. Same deal, a little cerulean, a little white. You're not looking for perfectly matching background everywhere. Let me get it on that corner. Blow just a corner to get in there. And around his little head. We still got to put his antennae on. And I'm basically cleaning the brush out here. Just cleaning it out there. Blending it in. A little cerulean. A little white. We're going to come around here. There's got canvas showing through, so we'll just cover it. A little too much white for my taste. Get more cerulean and blend it in. Get that canvas covered. And all of that. Okay, let's check this guy up here. We're doing good. We is doing good. Sorry if I sound goofy. I start enjoying myself too much. Okay, we've got this going here. So I'm going to clean my brush out because I want to go in just to Cerulean to emphasize the outside edge, to give it a glow. I don't really mean a glow, just to make sure it's good and dark, because you can see you can see canvas here in different areas and just blend it into the wet paint. Make sure you're getting the outside edges covered good before you get it any more into the white. And get that going. You don't want even Steven, you want it to be mishmash. So I'm doing a slip slap brush stroke. Up here is where I got it kind of uh, too much white, too close to the edge. So I'm gonna bring that in gradually. And as paint runs out of my brush, I kind of blend it into the lighter color. That needs to be a little bit darker around that wing, in my mind. So that all works. So we're going good, doing good. See up here, right up there, some of the, the uh, canvas is showing through a little too much. So let's dab in the blue around there. Dab in the blue. Whoops, went over that. You see how? Got too slip sloppy. Fix it later. So we're going to do the white dots. Some are dots, some are kind of um, elongated dots. And if you looked at a real butterfly, they're more squarish than they are roundish. But I just went ahead, so you can do dabs is what I'm trying to get at, but see how I just did these type of, um, I don't know what you call them, little things. So all I did, this is a zero liner. This is a Royal Majestic. You can use any liner, and you probably could use a white paint pen too, but I'm just going to randomly add, I could put a dot and pull, put a dot and pull, put a dot and pull. And I reload when it starts to get thin looking. And I just, some are bigger, 
and some are not. And if you look at them, they're kind of um, actually sequential or right lined up, but they just don't look right on a painting if they're all lined up. So I just kind of randomly start placing them. There's also some yellow ones. Now, I'll show you how it looks. I'll do the yellow, the Dolly Ride yellow, and how dull it can look. Make sure I don't have too much water in my brush. So I have yellow on my brush. And in here is the yellow one. And the yellow one. And you see how the black shows through? So it's very uh, transparent. So it doesn't show up really as a nice bright yellow. And the orange is the same way. So I, I, you can add the yellow like that if you wish. Add a little dim dimension, a little color. But I just go with the white. And it's not on the tip of my brush. And let me show you how I load my brush. Now I'm getting it all in there, twirl, twirl, and I pull, and I pull to a point. And that makes sure I keep the point on the brush. And then I just keep going down the side. And some are just dots. So you just push your brush down, turn it. Maybe there's more paint on the other side. And you go along. And some of these are actually yellow and orange. So if you wanted to come back in with yellow and orange, that's not doing it, um, then you can. Like make the dots along the edge, just the white, and then come in with some yellow or orange dots. And my black is not quite as deeply opaque as I would like it right there, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. If I was doing this for me, I would go in there and redo that. We're doing good. Just randomly place your dots. They don't have to be even in size because they're not on the um, butterfly. Oh, I was going to show you how I was going to fix that. I still can. And see, as you add the details, it just starts to come to life. And actually, even on the body, he has two little dots right there. This could be a girl. I don't know. I have a friend who would know. She knows that she raises butterflies and releases. And so there's that side. And you do the same on the other. These are just randomly placed. Okay, so I was going to show you how to bring the blue up, and that's basically just taking those two colors, and because the blue is darker and it has the white in it, you just bring the black up. So it's not quite as deep. And if you need to add a little more white, Seems like that black was still a little bit wet. You see it's streaking in there, but that really just adds a shadow. And that is how I would fix that. I can do even further down. I can see over here, right here is some too. And there you have it. I will continue with the butterfly over there, the dots, but I'm going to come in. And I could do this with my paint pen, and maybe I will. Do the antennae, just same with this one. Oop, I got my hand in the wet blue paint. You would wait till it's completely dry. Rest your finger on there. And there you have the antennae. I probably got them too short. They need to be a little bit longer, but that is basically how you paint a butterfly. I will finish it up because there's nothing else you really need me to show you how to do.
I'm just looking at it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You've got the blended background where it goes from dark to light. Let me pull you out here. You've got the blended background. You go dark to light. You've got the straw, the strawberries. What am I thinking? You've got the butterflies. And that's just all well and good. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though I fudged my way through parts of it. And how to paint butterflies. These are monarchs. I can do... I think I will do swallowtail butterflies too in a different design and I'm going to do a workshop with butterflies and flowers on um, one of my palette boards soon and I hope you'll come and see that. So I will see you in the next video and happy painting.